Blessings running over. Amen. As we give unto the Lord, we can count on the Lord to be sure that he'll meet our needs and show himself mighty in our lives. Amen. Well, good morning to you, Ecclesia. Good morning again. And welcome to those who are joining us right now on Facebook. Amen. God bless you as you join us on Facebook Live. Praise God for you and for your presence with us today. You are in for a great treat. Amen. This morning we have our dear friend and brother who has, who travels the country, literally the world, preaching the gospel. And we praise God for him. He comes to us every year about this time. We is such a blessing to us. And we have the privilege of being a, a supportive of his ministry and what God is doing and causing him to reach souls with the king for the kingdom of God through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. So at this time, we're going to ask you before he, before he comes up to welcome Evangelist Manuel Scott to come and share with us this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are excited about him today. But before he comes, amen, a good friend of Ecclesia, a good friend of his, is going to sh come and share a song with us as she comes and blesses us today. Sister Adrienne Littlejohn, her and Troy Littlejohn have become dear friends, her and her husband. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. And they have been such a great blessing. They join me every morning at 714 a.m. They're out of Santa Ana, right? Amen. So praise God for them. And the church is Second Baptist. Second Baptist of Santa Ana. So would you welcome Sister Adrian as she blesses us this morning? Hallelujah. Hello. Oh, I'm in trouble now. If I had known we were going to be on Facebook, I thought I was going to sneak in here and let my, not let my church know, but okay. <laughs> that secret's out now. <laughs> it is such a joy and a privilege and a pleasure to be here. I just love y'all church. I just love me some ECF. I tell you, um, I watch Pastor um, Beckley on Facebook for the 7.14 a.m. You know, morning devotions. I try to catch him because my son's bus comes around 7.15. So yeah, I try to catch him. And even if I don't catch him, I just see him later. Anyway, again, it's, it's a pleasure. We're looking forward to being back. My husband was reminding me, Troy, Wade, how you doing? What's up? Uh, and my son over there, by the way, I'm just going to brag on my child right now. Just so that you know, he's 14 years old, so pray for us. And he's in the eighth grade, and he does know everything. And he's autistic. He was uh, diagnosed when he was about two, um, going on three years old. And out of all the stuff that they could have told us that he couldn't do, wouldn't do, shouldn't do, this young man, two years in a row, honor roll student. Just saying. Look at God. <laughs> Uh, we, we couldn't be happier. We try to take all the credit, but we couldn't because God deserves all the glory. I'm just going to be quick before you. The song that we've chosen is a real simple song, and I think it's appropriate, especially for in my life right now, because I'm just so excited to be here. You just don't know. Um, it's a Margaret DeRoe song called Give Me a Clean Heart. And we have been turning our plate down. We're going to be here pretty much today, and we're going to be here Friday. We're going to be here Saturday. We got a hotel ready. We're going to be here. I tell you, I love this church. <laughs> All right. Give me a clean heart so I may serve. Lord, fix my heart 
so that I may be used by Thee, though I'm not worthy of all these blessings. Give me a clean heart, and I'll follow the. going to ask that Brother Danny and our musicians would be so kind to switch reels here, softly play our song, God Has Smiled on Me. And we want every head bowed and every eye closed, every head bowed, every eye closed. How we thank God today for the fact that he has permitted us to see the first month the 27th day in this brand new year. Pastor Josh, I've been sharing with congregations around the nation that individuals who are terribly ill in the hospital many times are said to be living on life support. Tubes and machines and various mechanisms are keeping them alive. But those of us who are country inches Christians we realize that we've been living on grace support. I said, we realize we've been living on grace support. It's been the sheer grace and mercy of God that have been keeping us alive. I stand to encourage someone here today by saying that regardless of whatever you may be going through, our God is still in the blessing business. My brother, my sister, young man, young woman, regardless of whatever you may be going through, our great God is still in the blessing business. Here it's about eyes to close, shall we pray? God is our refuge and our strength, very present help in trouble. I will lift up mine eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. It is again our Father, my God, that we, your children, saints, and soldiers come 
the most wondrous, amazing, and awesome name we know, and that is in the name of Jesus. We come in the name of Jesus. We come, Lord God, with gratitude in our hearts, thanksgiving on our lips, mindful of the fact that it's been you, your grace and mercy, that has brought us this far by faith. Oh God, we say thank you today. Thank you for last night's lying down. Thank you for having dispatched your holy angels who kept us from all hurt, harm, and danger. And then, Lord God, you allowed us to rise early this morning and in a world that has gone absolutely insane, you were kind enough to clothe us in our right minds. Oh God, we say thank you today. Thank you for this great church, Ecclesia Christian Fellowship, for each and every member that makes up this wonderful congregation. And then, Lord God, in a special way, we say thank you for the angel of this house. Thank you now for the Reverend Dr. Joshua Beckley. Thank you, Lord God, for his pastor's heart. Thank you for the fact that he wants the best for your people. Thank you for the fact that he loves you and he loves your word. Continue, Lord God, to bless him and First Lady Sister Linda and the entire family. Thank you for every preacher and evangelist of the gospel who's with us today. Thank you, Lord God, for all of our young people in the house. All of our millennials, help them to clearly understand anew that Jesus Christ is still the answer to any and every problem. For every parent, every grandparent, we said thank you. Now God, now God, today we need to hear a word from you. Open up our minds, prepare our spirits, convince us even now that something good is about to happen. We'll give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. We say thank you, Lord. 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 We're so mindful of those who are less fortunate than ourselves, the sick, the shut-in, the broken, the bruised, the lost, the least, the left out, the locked out, the lonely. Touch God as only you can do. Forgive us now for all of our sins, and then Heavenly Father, your servants must on its request that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. How many of you here to know today know beyond the shadow of a doubt that on this 27th day in this brand new year, God has smiled on you. In spite of it all, let me see some hands here. Let me see some hands here. Come on, we want to lift up our voices for just a few moments and we want to sing this song together. Sing it like you mean it. Sing it like you believe it. God has smiled on me. Oh, 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 God, God has smiled on me. He, he set me free. Let's wave our hands and sing to the Lord. Turn around and shake the hands of three people and sing to them. God, God had. Come on, shake somebody's hand. Smile. Oh, he, he, he said. Give God a hand of praise. Give God a hand of praise. Come on. Give God, give God a hand of praise. You know God has smiled on you. Why don't you give him a great gift? God bless you and of praise.
how we bless, praise, honor, and magnify the name of God today and how we truly thank him for his goodness, grace, mercy, and favor. How we indeed thank him for the fact that he loved us so much until he was willing to give unto us the very best that he had in his only begotten son, Jesus our Christ. In that very same spirit, we pay all respect, love, and appreciation to this your most able, anointed, outstanding, dedicated, educated, consecrated, Holy Ghost field, multi-talented, multi-dimensional man of God, one of the finest preaching, teaching, counseling pastors you'll ever find anywhere in the solar system today. Your pastor, my great friend, the one and only Reverend Dr. Joshua Beckley. Come on, 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 come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All of our ministers here and the evangelists and preachers of the gospel to the leadership team here to Danny and all these great musicians to our praise team to our ushers parents grandparents young people children millennials and to all of you my father's children saints of God soldiers of the cross ladies and gentlemen now if I covered everybody shout amen <laughs> I said shout amen now, if you're not too tired or ashamed, somebody help me to say amen. amen. Turn to your neighbor now and shake your neighbor's hand real tight. Look your neighbor right in the eye. Everybody shake somebody's hand and say, neighbor. neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Okay. In case you haven't heard, I want you to know on this Lord's day that in the name of Jesus, I'm too blessed to be stressed. Give God another hand of praise right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Somebody claim that today. I'm too blessed to be stressed. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. David said, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. He was simply saying that if you're breathing, then you ought to praise him. Amen. Well, let me check the house. Anybody breathing here today? Anybody glad that you're breathing in here today? Let's give him another hand to pray. Give him, give him, give him, give him. Hallelujah. Ecclesia, it is such a joy and privilege and an honor to be in your presence uh, one more time. We've been coming this way for some time now, and it's always a joy, always an honor. Amen. It's always a delight. Amen. And of course, I've been coming here long enough to see how the Lord has continued to bless you. Amen. I've been telling you, and it's true, amen, that I brag about this church everywhere I go. Say amen. Amen. Praise be to God. I brag on you. I brag on Pastor Josh. Amen. In terms of the fervency, in terms of the sincerity and the integrity of the kind of ministry you have here. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Oh, I tell you, I just wish all of my good friends who are preachers, I wish they could preach here. Say amen. <laughs> amen. Before they go to heaven, I wish they could preach here because it is such a delight and a joy. In that regard, I want to say thank you to your great pastor, my great friend, Pastor Josh Beckley. Amen. A great leader. Amen. Amen. A credit to this community, to this church, and to the kingdom. Say amen. Well, I want to see if, 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 if anybody's on the right page today. How many of you here at Ecclesia know that in Joshua Beckley, you have one of God's best? I said you have one of God's best. Praise be to God. No doubt about it. Amen. And I want to thank him publicly once again and thank the evangelism committee. Amen. For supporting our ministry in such a strong and generous, amen, and helpful way. Say amen. Amen. God be praised. Amen. Pastor Josh, come on up here. I got something for you. Amen. Praise be to God. Now, saints, now, I tell you one thing. If your pastor is not clean today, say amen. I told him when I came in the study and I, and I looked at what he was wearing, everything's matching. Say amen. I said, Pastor Josh, I said, if you get any cleaner, they're going to arrest you. Say amen. He's as clean as a Kansas City chitlin. Say amen. <laughs> now that's old school. Amen. Old school. 
That's old school. Pastor Josh, we love you. We thank God for you and the way in which you have allowed the Lord to use you and how you are moving this church from height to height. Amen. Praise be to God. Oh, if we had more pastors, amen, like you, amen, our communities would be so much better. Amen. God be praised. Amen. I appreciate you supporting me and, and uh, you're in a new building fund program. Praise be to God. And I want to be a part of that. Amen. Here's $500 from my ministry. Amen. God be praised. Amen. Bless you, brother. Love you, man. All right, brother. Okay, God bless you, man. All right. We love Sister Linda, his lovely wife. Amen. Sister Linda, come forward, baby. Come on. Come on. Sister Linda. Amen. Give a hand to my lovely wife, Dr. Chingway Thomas Scott. Stand up there. Give a hand. Give a hand. Give a hand. Give a hand. Come on. Give a big hand. Give a big hand. Give a big hand. I think I told you last year, I believe I told you last year, amen, and some of you were not here last year, that by profession, my wife is a veterinarian, amen. And when I discovered that, Pastor John, Sister Linda, and I saw Brother Troy, uh, how pretty she was, I couldn't help but to say, meow. <laughs> Sister Adrian, Brother Troy, and their lovely son, thank you so much. What a great gift you are to the body. Give Sister Adrian another great big hand. Amen. Great friends, supporters for years. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. My Godchildren are here. Oh, and I'm happy to see both of them and their father, my brother. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Journey's here. Stand up, Journey. Come on, give him a hand. Growing up. And Jada, stand up, baby. Come on, give her a hand. Give her a hand. Smile, baby. Smile, 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 smile. And their dad, Brother Eddie, stand up, big Eddie. Give him a hand right here. Wonderful, wonderful. God be praised. Amen. Quickly, brothers and sisters, let me do it this way. Uh, at the close of the service, as has been our custom, we always bring uh, helpful materials and resources. We want you to stop by the table, and I need everybody to stop by and pick up something if you are able. Uh, praise be to God. Um, many of you here today have been very disturbed about what is going on in the White House. And like myself, you've been even more disturbed about who is in the White House. Amen. And we who are genuine, Pastor Josh, genuine evangelicals, I said genuine evangelicals, amen. It is very difficult for us to support a leader who is allergic to the truth. Say amen. <laughs> it's hard for us to support, amen, we genuine evangelicals who believe that Jesus is the way, the truth. Somebody help me say the truth the truth and the life, amen. It's hard for us to support, Brother Kenny, amen. Uh, someone who lies organically, say amen. <laughs> it's just in his nature, amen. And as a consequence, I put together uh, two lectures uh, collectively known as a Christian response to Donald Trump. A Christian response to Donald Trump. Regardless of your political affiliation, you wanna get these lectures, amen, it'll be insightful. Uh, uh, helpful based upon the word of God. Donald Trump will go down in history, amen, as the great tweeter. Say amen. <laughs> Somebody help me say tweet, tweet. <laughs> and in this lecture, amen, I say to him, President Trump, God has some tweets for you. Say amen. <laughs> you need to know what Donald Trump really thinks about people of color. Now, this is serious. I said, you really need to know, if you don't know already, what he really thinks about people of color. Be sure to pick this up. Also, an extremely uh, helpful resource 
uh, is a book service that I have put together out of my own library, some 470 plus books. It is entitled, Books Every Preacher and Every Believer Should Be Reading. Say amen, somebody. Amen. amen. If you're a serious Christian, you are a reader. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Someone has said, amen, I, I don't know if it was C.S. Lewis, but someone has said that uh, the Christian's book bill ought to at least equal their clothing bill. Say amen. You want to get this resource. Amen. I put together all sorts of books dealing with all sorts of issues, books on the Holy Spirit, books on the parables, books on, uh, uh, amen, the, the resurrection, uh, the crucifixion and the resurrection, uh, books on the Apostle Paul. Oh, this is quite a resource. You want to be sure to get your copy. And then the final um, lecture I'm going to mention, I have two, so many I can't, can't mention all of them, is for all of you wonderful singles in the house. Amen. If you're 16 years old and you're a single, for whatever reason, just raise your hand. Be honest. Raise your hand. You're single. You're single. For whatever reason, you say, come on, come on. Amen. Amen. Now, some of you are doing like this. I don't know what that means. Amen. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't know if it's up or down. Amen. But for all of you singles, and if you have singles in your family who are not here, be sure to get this extremely important new lecture we put together entitled, Jesus Was Single Just Like You. Amen. 21 lessons Jesus teaches this generation of singles and millennials. Be sure to get it. The last item we're going to mention is our ministry calendar, calendar ballpoint pen, beautiful pen, writes black ink, and then it has a calendar for the year 2019. Say amen. amen. Right inside. Be sure to get your very, very uh, important and neat and cool pen. Say amen. amen. God be praised. All right. Now, how many of us are ready to hear a word from the Lord? Amen. Now, is that why we're here? You got to talk to me. I said, is that why we're here? And today, 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 for just a few moments, I would that you would prayerfully come with me as we focus our minds upon the theme, upon the subject, words the devil cannot stand. This is a word for our new year. Words the devil cannot stand. And for our scriptural text, I would that you would turn with me to three passages of scripture. Our first scripture will be found in Revelation chapter 19, verse 6. Our second scripture will be found in Mark chapter 14, verse 36. And then our final scripture will be found in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. I shall repeat those scriptures. If you have your Bibles or facsimile thereof, please stand with me now. Amen. As we turn to our first, our first text, Revelation chapter 19, verse 6. Revelation chapter 19, verse 6. Reading from the King James Version, there we find John the Revelator saying, And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Shall we now turn to our second scripture, that being Mark chapter 14, verse 36. Mark chapter 14, verse 36. 14th chapter of Mark's gospel, that 36th verse. Mark chapter 14, verse 36, we find these words recorded. And Jesus said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. And then for our final scripture, shall we turn to Matthew's gospel, Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. The first chapter of Matthew's gospel, that 21st verse. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. There we find these words recorded. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Words the devil cannot stand. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Please, if you would, repeat it after me. Words the devil cannot stand. Everybody shake a neighbor's hand real tight. Look your neighbor right in the eye and say, neighbor, oh, my neighbor, whatever you do, don't go to sleep on this one. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, let the record clearly show that I've come to church today, Robert Strong, to give the devil a migraine. Yes, Pastor Josh, I've come to church today, amen, to give the devil a migraine. For he's done too much damage. He's caused too much confusion. He's wrecked too many lives. Saints, I've come to church today, Ecclesia, to give the devil a migraine. The devil. The devil. The devil. The devil. The devil. The devil. That Greek word is diabolos, and it means an accuser, it means a slanderer, it means adversary. The devil, you see, is the arch enemy of the kingdom of God. Dr. Chin Wei, the devil, please understand, dear friends, is the Hitler of hell. The devil is the Napoleon of evil. The devil is the Tyrannosaurus Rex of trials, tribulation, and trouble. The devil is the CEO, that is the chief executive officer of chaos, calamity, confusion, and catastrophe. Oh, Ecclesia, I've come to church today, I tell you, to give the devil a migraine. Now, if that's all right, say amen. I said, if that's all right, say amen. And dear friends, let me say this to you as you move through this brand new year. Don't you be so educated. Don't you be so sophisticated. Don't you be so urbane and, amen, and urban and chic and cosmopolitan that you don't clearly realize and recognize that the devil is real. Oh, yes, I said the devil and all of his imps and demons from hell is real. Do I have a witness here? I said the devil is real. For I dare say that some of you here today work with some devils. Some of you here today go to school with some devils. Some of you here today go to church with some devils. Some of you here today live with some devils. And then some of you sadly are married to some devils. Oh, I'm trying to get you to see the day, Sister Linda, that the devil is real. And Pastor Josh, that's precisely why the great G.K. Chesterton has said that the worst crime that the devil has committed is that he has convinced the modern mind that he does not exist. That's precisely why 1 Peter 5 and 8 finds the writer saying, Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Oh, Ecclesia, brothers and sisters, please understand in this brand new year that the devil is real. And so today, uh, according to our wonderful text, uh, you need to know that there are three major words that the devil cannot stand. Yes, as you move through this brand new year, clearly understand, according to our beautiful text, uh, that there are at least three major words that the devil cannot stand. And saints, therefore, if you're tired of the devil being on your trail, if you're tired of the devil being on your case, if you're tired of the devil getting on your last nerve, then please pay close attention to these three major words that the devil cannot stand. Well, here we go. The first word is uh, hallelujah. The second word is father. And then that third word is uh, Jesus. Yes, according to our amazing text for today, uh, a man, three words that the devil cannot stand. Uh, the first word is uh, hallelujah. The second word is uh, father. And then that third word, saints, is uh, Jesus. Uh, these three words, uh, the devil, our arch enemy, cannot Stand Now concerning our first word, uh, amen, that being uh, the word uh, hallelujah. Somebody help me say, if you don't mind, do your hands like I'm doing mine and say, I need everybody, come on. Some of you have exercise all day, come on. Yes, that first word is uh, hallelujah. The devil cannot stand this word hallelujah. Uh, Hallelujah. For saints realize as we look at it a little bit more carefully that this word hallelujah is the Greek transliteration of two Hebrew words. Uh, we have the Hebrew word halal and then we have the Hebrew word yah. 
And the Hebrew word halal uh, means praise. Uh, and the Hebrew word yah means God or the Lord. Uh, Jada literally put together journey. The word hallelujah means praise God uh, or praise uh, the Lord. Uh, and Ecclesia, you need to understand today uh, that the devil uh, does not like this word uh, hallelujah. He cannot stand uh, this word uh, hallelujah because he does not want you uh, under any circumstance uh, to praise uh, the Lord. Uh, I said he cannot stand this word uh, hallelujah because he does not want you my brother you my sister under any circumstance uh, to praise uh, the Lord. Uh, the devil does not want you uh, to echo the words of David uh, when he said I will bless the Lord uh, at all times uh, his praise uh, shall continually uh, be in my mouth. Uh, the devil cannot stand this word hallelujah because he does not want you under any circumstance to praise the Lord. Uh, well, let's go just a little bit deeper on this one. Uh, recognize on the Sunday saints uh, that, amen, this word hallelujah is not only a praise affirmation, uh, but it is a victory shout. Uh, yes, yes, uh, this word hallelujah is not only a praise affirmation, uh, but it is a victory shout. Shout uh, for according to our first text, Revelation chapter 19, verse 6. Uh, we can hear, we can hear the great redeemed uh, in heaven uh, rejoicing over the fact uh, that the Lord God had defeated the great harlot. Babylon, And as a consequence, Pastor Josh, the redeemed in heaven shout out, Hallelujah, the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. That's what they said, Hallelujah, the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. This word, Hallelujah, is a victory shout. And so it should be rather clear, friends, that the devil, our chief enemy, cannot stand. And, uh, this word hallelujah because he does not want you to know uh, that come what will or may uh, you have uh, the victory uh, somebody shout victory uh, somebody shout hallelujah the devil cannot stand uh, this word hallelujah because he does not want you to know uh, to understand and comprehend uh, that come what will or may uh, in spite of whatever uh, you have the victory and that's why Paul declares in 1st Corinthians 15 and 57 but thanks be to God who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ the devil cannot stand this word hallelujah because he does not want you to know that in spite of it all you have the victory I said you have the the victory you have the victory you have the victory victory over doubt victory over hurt victory over pain victory over confusion victory over nonsense you have the victory shout hallelujah I said shout hallelujah Hallelujah. Well, let's go just a little bit deeper yet on this one. Uh, understand, saints, look at me and hear me well. Uh, weak Christians. Uh, I said, Pastor Josh, weak Christians uh, cannot praise God uh, when sickness comes. Uh, weak Christians uh, cannot praise God uh, when sorrow comes. Uh, weak Christians uh, cannot praise God uh, when tragedy comes. Uh, weak Christians uh, cannot praise God uh, when trouble comes. Uh, weak Christians uh, cannot praise God uh, when disappointments come. Uh, you need to know uh, that the great Christian existentialist theologian, uh, Dr. Soren Kierkegaard has said, uh, a man that nothing should ever be considered a mis fortune uh, if it brings you closer to your goal. Uh, my, 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 uh, nothing uh, should ever be considered a misfortune 
fortune uh, if it brings you closer to your goal uh, well saints uh, hear me well today in this new year if your goal uh, is to get closer to the Lord uh, I said if your goal in this new year uh, is to get closer to the Lord uh, then you ought to praise him uh, for whatever uh, brings you closer to the Lord uh, for if sickness uh, brings you closer to the Lord uh, praise him uh, if sorrow uh, brings you closer to the Lord uh, praise him uh, if tragedy uh, brings you closer to the Lord uh, praise him uh, if trouble uh, brings you closer to the Lord uh, praise him uh, if disappointment uh, brings you closer to the Lord uh, praise him uh, if setbacks uh, bring you closer to the Lord uh, praise him uh, praise him uh, praise him uh, hallelujah 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 For when I think uh, About his goodness uh, And all uh, Of what he's done for me uh, My soul uh, Cries out uh, Hallelujah I thank God I thank God I thank God I thank God For saving me but then, but then, but then that second word, that second word saying that the devil cannot stand is the word father. Oh my God. That second word that the devil cannot stand, Ecclesia, is the word father. Somebody help me say father. Lift your hands uh, up to heaven and pull it down and say, everybody, come on. You'll feel much better. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yes, father. The devil cannot stand this word, Father. Let's look at our second text. Look at our second text. Jesus can be heard fervently praying, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will. That's what he says, Father, if it be possible. In fact, I know, uh, he says, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Amen. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. Thanks here in the agony crucible, uh, amen, of Gethsemane. Jesus is making it crystal clear that he wants the Father's will and not his own will. To prevail in his life. You see that in the text. Uh, he's making it, can he, amen, he's making it crystal clear. Amen, that he wants the Father's will and not his own will to prevail in his life. Therefore, saints, you need to know that the devil cannot stand this word Father. Because he knows that whenever you sincerely from your heart say, Father, you want God's will and not your own will to prevail in your life. Somebody shout glory. I said, somebody shout glory. Oh, yes, the devil knows that when you sincerely from your heart earnestly say, Father, you want God's will and not your own will to prevail in your life. Well, saints, let's look at this a little bit deeper. Notice that in our second text, Jesus just does not say, Father, but he says, Abba, Father. Yes, that's what he says. This is important. He says, Abba. Father. Somebody help me say Abba. I said, help me say Abba. Now, Abba is the Aramaic word for Father. Aramaic being a uh, Jewish uh, dialect of Hebrew, amen, praise be to God, uh, amen, uh, was the actual language that Jesus spoke while here on earth. For you see, Abba is a tender word. Abba is an affectionate word word. Uh, Abba essentially means uh, daddy. <laughs> Somebody help me say daddy. Yes, Abba essentially means uh, daddy. Watch me now. Uh, Abba expresses intimacy. Abba expresses trust. Abba expresses 
dependence. Therefore, ecclesial saints, you must realize and recognize that the devil cannot stand this word Abba. He cannot stand this word Father because he does not want you intimate with God. He does not want you trusting in God. He does not want you depending on God. Well, I'm going just a little bit deeper yet on this one. You must understand, church, that in the spiritual and positive sense, Jesus had a father fixation. My God in heaven. I said in the positive and spiritual sense, this Adrian Jesus had a father fixation. Everybody touch a neighbor's hand. Shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, my Jesus had a father fixation. Yes, he did. And by this, I simply mean to say, watch me here, that Jesus was absolutely obsessed with pleasing the Father, with doing the will of the Father. He had a father fixation. For did he not say, in my father's house, there are many mansions. Did he not say to his mother, when he was just 12 years old, mother, don't you know uh, that I must be about uh, my father's uh, business. Uh, did he not say, uh, he that hath seen me uh, hath seen uh, the father? Uh, did he not say, uh, I and my father are one? Uh, did he not say from the cross, uh, Father, into thy hands uh, I commend uh, my spirit? Uh, Jesus had, you see, uh, a father fixation. And saints, as you move through uh, this brand new year, you just like Jesus uh, ought to acquire, ought to develop uh, a father fixation. Uh, you like Jesus uh, ought to become obsessed uh, with pleasing the father, with doing the will of the father. Let me ask somebody a question, uh, and I believe you're going to be honest with the preacher. Is there anybody in the house uh, other than this evening? evangelist uh, who wants to please the father more uh, in this new year than you did uh, in last year uh, my god uh, you gotta develop a father fixation uh, you gotta be obsessed uh, with pleasing the father with doing the will uh, of the father and saying somebody write this down uh, you need to know uh, that the devil uh, cannot stand uh, Father fixated believers. Oh no, I said the devil, our arch enemy, cannot stand by the eddy. Father fixated believers. Therefore, let me encourage someone here today to come and go with me to my father's house. I said, come on and go with me to my father's house. Come on, I said, come on and go with me to my father's house for there's joy, peace, and love in my father's house. The next time the devil puts you under real pressure, I said, the next time the enemy puts you under real pressure, you ought to fall on your knees and learn how to pray. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thy help from me, oh, where shall I go? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But finally, brothers and sisters, in accordance with our text, you need to know this day. Hallelujah, on the 27th day in the brand new year. That not only cannot the devil stand the word uh, hallelujah. Not only cannot the devil stand the word uh, father. But Ecclesia, you need to know uh, that sure enough, uh, the devil cannot stand the name Jesus. Oh no, I said the devil uh, cannot stand the name Jesus. If you love him, shout Jesus. 
I said, if you love him, shout Jesus. If you really love him, point your finger toward heaven and shout Jesus. Everybody shout Jesus. Everybody shout Jesus. Everybody shout Jesus. The devil, Pastor Josh, you know this. He cannot stand the name Jesus. Look what our final text, Matthew 1 verse 21 declares. It says, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, uh, for watch this, for he shall save uh, his people from their sins. Uh, isn't that beautiful? Uh, anybody glad that that verse is in the Bible? Uh, I said, anybody here today glad that that verse is in the Bible? Uh, and she shall bring forth a son, uh, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, uh, for he shall save. Uh, somebody help me say, save. Uh, he shall save his people from their sin. The devil, sure enough, cannot stand the name Jesus. Now, according to this text, saints, you need to know that the name Jesus is a salvific name. The name Jesus, Pastor Josh, let me get theological here, is a soteriological name. The name Jesus, in other words, is a saving name name. I said the name Jesus is a saving name. For this name saves sinners. This name saves transgressors. This name saves lawbreakers. This name saves alcoholics. This name saves drug addicts and drug dealers. This name uh, saves pimps and prostitutes. Uh, this name uh, saves lesbians and homosexuals. Uh, this name uh, saves whoremongers. Uh, this name uh, saves drama queens. Uh, amen, praise be to God. Uh, and uh, hoochie mamas. Uh, my God, yes. Uh, this name uh, saves Pookie uh, and Ray Ray uh, and OGs uh, and players and ballers uh, and the Kim and the Lanchine and the Quitha and the Nene. This name saves struggling folk like you and like me. The devil cannot stand the name Jesus. For the Bible says that demons tremble at that name. He cannot stand the name Jesus. Shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I love the name Jesus. 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 I don't care if the devil cannot stand this name, but I love the name Jesus. And you know, as I close, Pastor Josh, I contend that one of the main reasons why the devil cannot stand the name Jesus is because the name Jesus gives the devil uh, a defeatist inferiority complex. Uh, say amen. Uh, I said the name Jesus uh, gives the devil uh, a defeatist uh, inferiority complex. Uh, for you see, Jesus defeated him uh, when he cast out demons. Uh, Jesus defeated him uh, when he healed uh, the sick. Uh, Jesus defeated him uh, when he died uh, on the cross. Uh, Jesus defeated him uh, when he rose uh, from the dead. Uh, the devil uh, cannot stand uh, the name Jesus. Uh, for I stop by to remind you, uh, for there's none other name uh, under heaven uh, given amongst men whereby we must be saved. I've stopped by to remind you that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved.
saved. The songwriter wrote, there is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Do I have a witness here? Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Thank God for the name of Jesus. Thank God for the name of Jesus. Thank God for the name of Jesus. His name is above Oprah. His name is above Donald Trump. His name is above Steve Harvey. His name is above Killer Mike or Wiz Khalifa. His name is above Beyonce and Ashanti and Alicia Keys and Nicki Minaj and Rihanna and Chris Brown. His name is above Ludacris, Outcast, Corrupt, 50 Cent's Common, Cameron, Drake, The Game, T.I.T. Payne, Lil Wayne, Lil Kim, Ice-T, Ice Cube, Amen, Snoop Dogg, Snoop Lion, Amen, Bow Wow, Quest Love, The Weeknd, Cardi B, Amen, Bruno Mars, Pit Bull, The Roots, The Black Eyed Peas, Andre 3000, Big Boy Will I Am, CeeLo Green, Lady Gaga, Walker Clocker Slave. His name is above every name. His name is above every name. Hallelujah. Mr. Beckley, my dear friend, I thank you for this gracious invitation. Ecclesia, I thank you for receiving the word in the manner in which you have received it. Again, Evangelism Committee, I thank you for your great and gracious support. It was the great Dr. Warren Wiersbe, and in that book service, I list several of his books. You want to read everything that he has written, Dr. Warren Wiersbe. Pastor Josh, he says that most church people do not need to be informed. They need to be reminded. They need to be reminded. And today, I've stopped by to remind you, as you press your way into this brand new year, that there are at least three words that the devil cannot stand. Well, let me check the house. How many of you know that the devil is real? 
the enemy is real. The personification of evil is real. All right, I'm gonna see if it's gonna be real honest with you. How many of you had to deal with the devil trying to get here to church today? And look at all these hands, look at all these hands. He especially shows up on Sunday morning. The devil do, you know, you do know that the devil comes to church. I said, the devil what? And guess how he gets here? We bring him. Come on, son. <laughs> we bring him. Three words that the devil cannot stand. That first word is, oh, pastor, somebody got it today. It's a praise affirmation. But then it's a victory shout. Say amen to my. We have to continually shout the victory as we move through this brand new year. That second word is, that's a big one there. When you say, Abba, Father, you want God's will and not your own will to prevail in your life. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care what you drive, how nice you look. I don't care how many degrees you have behind your name. Your way is not better than God's way. I need to say that. I said, your way is not better than God's way. But then that final word, it's a name that the devil cannot stand. It's a name. Shout it if you believe it. Shout his name if you love him. Give him a hand of praise right here. Give him, give him, give him. Pastor Josh. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. Brother Danny is playing that beautiful song, Be Grateful. Be Grateful. The Word of God says that the goodness of God is to lead you to repentance. Someone here today, someone here today, you've been wrestling with that devil and you've been trying to do it all by yourself. Wrong move, wrong move. The devil is stronger than you. He's stronger than your flesh. In fact, he uses your flesh against you. He uses your ego against you. But today, today, you can get it right. Today, on this fourth Sunday in this brand new year, the 27th day, you can get it right, my brother. You can get it right, my sister. Pastor Beckley, I want you to come up and just stand at the center of the altar facing the people right here. Pastor's coming. Somebody, 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 somebody here today needs to get closer to God. You don't want to operate this year like you operated last year. You want to get closer to God. You want to become, you want to become more intimate with God. You don't want God just to be Father. You want Him to be Abba Father. You want Him to be Daddy. Our heads are up, our eyes are open. We're all standing now. If you're here today and you want to get closer to Jesus, you want to be saved. By the blood of the Lamb. Come on down and shake Pastor's hand right now. Who'll be the first to come? You're saying, Yes, Brother Preacher, I want to be saved. Yes, Brother Preacher, I want to be saved. Come on down, come on down. Yes, Brother Preacher, I want to be saved. Yes, Brother Preacher, I want to be saved. I believe that Jesus has the power to save my soul. I want to be saved today. Well, perchance, perchance, you've been saved already, but for various reasons, you've strayed away from the church. Hear me well. I said, I said, for various reasons, you've strayed away from the church. But today, the Lord has convicted you. The Lord has touched your heart. And you know it's time for you to get back in church. There's no better church anywhere than Ecclesia. No better pastor anywhere than Pastor Joshua Beckley. You need to come. You need to come right now. You need to come right now. I see you coming to my right. You need to come right now. Come on down, come on down, come on down, come on down, come on down. Come on down, come on down, come on down, come on down, come on down. Right now, right now, today, today, today. 
right now, right now, be grateful, be grateful that God has given you yet another chance to get it right with him. Be grateful, be grateful, be grateful, be grateful, be grateful, be grateful, be grateful. Come on down, come on down, come on down. Come on down, come on down, come on down, come on down. My brother, my sister, young man, young woman, I know you're here. You got to get out of your pride. You don't want to move through this year like you moved in defeat on last year. He's calling your name. We're going to do it this way. We're going to do it this way. Not trying to embarrass anybody, but if you're here today, if you're here today, you're saved, you know you're saved. You've been baptized. I want you to raise your right hand right now. Be honest. Saved. You know you're saved. You've been baptized. And right now you are actively involved in your church. Raise your right hand. Be honest now. Be honest. You're in the house of God. Be honest. Saved. You know you're saved. You've been baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And right now you're actively involved in your church. Raise that right hand and just say, I'm saved. And I know I'm saved. I'm saved. Because one day. I said, yes, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. And ever since that day, my soul has been satisfied. Thank God I'm saved. Hallelujah. I'm saved. Praise God. Praise God. Now, brothers and sisters, no, 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 remain standing. Brothers and sisters, if you had your hand up. I want you to slip that right hand up one more time because we're getting ready to do something very important. We want to make a mental note of those persons who are not raising their hands, not trying to embarrass anyone, but God knows we're trying to get everyone to Jesus. God bless you. If your hand is up, what I want you to do right now, I want you to slowly turn to your left. Slowly turn to your left. Find out what side your left is on. Amen. Turn to your left. And make a mental note of those persons who are not raising their hands. Make a mental note of those persons who are not raising their hands. All right? Slowly turn to your right. Slowly turn to your right. Again, make a mental note of those persons who are not raising their hands. All right, now slowly look in back of you. Slowly look in back of you. Again, make a mental note of those persons who are not raising their hands. All right, now slowly look in front of you. Take a pan panoramic view in front of you. Make a mental note of those persons who are not raising their hands. All right, hands down. Now, saints, looking at me, looking at the preacher, if you saw someone, hear me well, if you saw someone, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. If you saw someone who did not raise their hands, you may know them, you may not know them. That's not important. But if you saw someone who did not raise their hands, what I want you to do right now, in the name of Jesus and under the power of the Holy Spirit, I want you to gently go to that person right now. Gently go to that person right now. Gently take them by the hand and say, come on, my brother, come on, my sister. I walk down the aisles with you. You need Jesus and you need him today. Come on, let's start witnessing. If you saw someone who did not raise their hands, come on, come on, come on, go to them. Go to them right now. They've been waiting for you. Come on, they've been waiting for you. Here, here comes another right here. Here comes another. Somebody else, somebody else, come on, 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 come on. It's time to come, it's time to come, it's time to come. Come on, here they come, right here to the left. Give them a hand, come on. Welcome them, welcome them, welcome them. Come on, get it right, get it right, get back in church, get back to the Lord if you have to. Come on, 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 somebody else, somebody else. You're worth waiting on, you're worth waiting on, you're worth